This video will show you how to highlight a moving object in DaVinci Resolve. We'll use Fusion, but have no fear. This is simple enough for even the Fusion illiterate. We'll start with the clip on the edit page. I'll place a playhead over it and click the Fusion tab at the bottom to head into Fusion. There's two nodes, Media In and Media Out. Media In contains the clip from the edit page, and Media Out is the end result of whatever we do in Fusion. That means that anything that's done in Fusion has to be done between these two nodes. We'll be adding three nodes in total. We're going to highlight a moving vehicle, so we need a way to keep the highlight fixed on the vehicle as it's moving. A tracker node will enable us to do that. It'll create a set of data we can easily use to keep the highlight fixed on the vehicle. With the Media In node selected, I'll press Shift Spacebar to add a Tracker node. I'll type Tracker in the search field. The Tracker node is selected in the list, so I'll press Return on my keyboard. The Media In node is connected to the Tracker node's yellow input. Any footage you want to track must be connected to the yellow input. Now we need to select the frame where the object, or vehicle in this case, is clearly visible. This will help the tracker do a better job of tracking it. This is a good frame right here. You can see the IntelliTrack rectangle in Viewer 2. I'll grab it with the mouse and place it over the vehicle. In the inspector, I'll click the Track Forward then Reverse button to track the vehicle. This may take a while depending on your system and clip length. It's done. I'll play the clip to see if the tracking rectangle stays fixed on the vehicle. Okay, looking great. In the inspector, I'll double click on IntelliTrack 1 in the tracker list and rename it to Vehicle. And I'll click on the check mark until it turns into a dot. This will suspend the tracker and lock its data. This will prevent it from being tracked again if I decide to track something else in the shot. To highlight the vehicle, we'll darken the entire shot except for the vehicle. First, we'll darken everything. With the tracker node selected, I'll add a brightness contrast node by clicking its icon in the node editor toolbar. In the inspector, I'll bring down the gain to dim the shot. Now we'll apply an ellipse mask to the brightness contrast node. A mask will allow us to hide the effect of the brightness contrast node in a specific area. This will create a bright spot, which we'll use to highlight the vehicle. The brightness contrast node is selected, so I'll click the ellipse icon in the toolbar. The ellipse node is connected to the blue effect mask input of the brightness contrast node. In Viewer 2, there's now a circular area in the center that's darker than the rest of the shot. I'll load the ellipse node into Viewer 1 by pressing 1. In Viewer 1, there's a white circle surrounded by black. Here's how a mask works. Black hides and white reveals. Here the mask is applied to the brightness contrast node, which is darkening the shot. The black area is hiding the effect, and the white area is revealing it. Notice that in Viewer 2, the dark circular area corresponds to the white circle in Viewer 1. If I move the white circle in Viewer 1, the dark circular area in Viewer 2 will move along in sync. To highlight the vehicle, we need to reverse the mask. That is, we need a black circle surrounded by white. Black will hide the effect of the brightness contrast node, creating an area that's brighter than the rest of the shot. In the inspector, I'll place a check mark in the invert box to reverse the mask. I'll adjust the size of the circle in Viewer 2 and place it over the car. The ellipse node must be selected in order to do this.
I'll deselect the ellipse node by clicking in an empty area and play the clip. The highlight isn't staying on the vehicle. We'll use the tracking data to make it stick. First, I'll select the ellipse node. Now, in the inspector, I'll right click on the center X label and select Connect to Tracker 1 Vehicle Offset Position. The highlight's now positioned on the vehicle. Let's play the clip again. It's working. I'll soften the edge of the mask so the highlighted area is not so sharp around the edges. To do that, I'll first select the ellipse node. In the inspector, I'll uncheck Show View Controls just so I can see what I'm doing better, and then move the soft edge slider to the right. And I'll select the Brightness Contrast node and lower the gain a bit more to make the rest of the shot darker still. That looks great. Let's do a slow fade in. I'll move to the first frame by pressing Command left arrow, Control left arrow on Windows. I'll double click the gain label to reset it to its default value and keyframe the field. Now I'll move to frame 40 by typing 40 in the edit field under Viewer 2 and pressing the return key on my keyboard. I'll adjust the gain field to darken the shot. A keyframe is added automatically. Let's play it. That looks super. You can also use a rectangular mask or a polygon mask that can be shaped to your liking. Thank you for watching.